Next speaker is Les from Sustain Housing Support. Hi, thanks very much for inviting us to be here. Absolutely delighted to be here. And housing plays a really important part in improving the health of the community. So it, it's really good to be here and to have the work we do recognised. The Sustain Consortium has been around for a few years now, and it's actually made up of a consortium of principally housing providers um, around Shropshire. And the concept behind Sustain was that it's better to work together. So instead of competing for contracts, we collaborate. And by working together, we plan to be much more effective. <coughs> we can also, by working together, harmonise the offer that we have across the county. So wherever you live within Shropshire, you're going to get a similar type of service from this um, support service. Um, <coughs> what we offer is, um, it, it's often referred to as floating support, um, and it, it provides support to, to, to people who are vulnerable. And it, it's kind of the A and D of social care because it's anybody and everybody. Um, whoever needs us, we're willing to help. But it's about giving people the, the skills to enable them to live in their own homes and, and to sustain the tenancy. Because one of the things that we all need, really, to be healthy and happy is, is a secure home. <coughs> so what we do is about helping people to manage the crises that are in their lives to enable them to, to maintain a successful tenancy. So as I say, we work with anybody, anywhere in Shropshire. So that's old people, young people, people at risk of homelessness, people who actually are homeless, and um, people who suffer or are at risk of domestic violence, um, people have physical difficulties, which can be, include disabilities, adults with learning difficulties, and people with acquired brain injury and autism. <coughs> um, what do we do? Um, the short answer is whatever people need. And I think one of the great things about sustained services is it's kind of without limits and without boundaries. So <coughs> we do the things that nobody else will do. <coughs> Most services, like in the NHS and social care, have limits. And I know in my experience there have been times when the district nurse has said, well, that's not us, we don't do that. And the social workers and the social care people said, well, that's health. And we kind of, um, when you're the person that's caught in the middle of that, and you can't get your medication, or you can't get that, or whatever, what you don't need, really, is somebody who comes to you and tells you it's not their job. And so the sustained people, if it's not our job, we find out whose job it is, and we enable you to access it, and try and sort out the problems. And sometimes that's really important, because it's having somebody who's there who can talk the right language sometimes and get people to work together to do what needs to be done, to help people with problems which don't fit neatly into a health or social care bucket. Because actually, many of the people that we work with have problems which fall into lots of buckets. And we have to pull the buckets together and, and, and help them to work through each of those issues so that they can move forward in their lives. <clears throat> so it's about providing people with help to get benefits. It's about providing people with help to access um, statutory services is providing support in crises and sometimes these crises are really deep and really severe and you just need somebody there who's not going to judge you, who's not going to say it's not my job love, um, but who's just going to roll the sleeves up muck in and get on and help you to sort it out. And when I say help you to sort it out, it's not about doing it all for you, it's about empowering you and giving you the skills. <clears throat> and some of it is about providing social activities um, <clears throat> and making community facilities such as our um, retirement living hubs um, available to the community. <coughs> so our priorities um, are set by the contract that we have with the Shropshire Council um, and actually we are really lucky to have this service in Shropshire because actually a lot of other counties do not have this sort of service and it is immensely valuable. Um, so I do count us really lucky to have the service and I really appreciate the continued support that we've had from the Council. We provide good value for money, and we do do a good job, so that's why we've got it, but it, it is a real privilege to be able to do this here. So we help people who are homeless, we help people to access services. It's also about trying to um, save people using more expensive services, such as um, hospital admission, social care, residential care, and so on and so forth. So while a lot of it is about homelessness and housing, it's also about helping to reduce access to a uh, mother need for more expensive long-term care. 
um, services. We've got dedicated staff filling in with other services. Um, we do everything from drop-ins, face-to-face -face contact, telephone contact, group activities. Um, and we try to be swift and you know deal with the issue and move on. But some people do need ongoing support because if you take that support away, they're just going to fall back into crisis. So obviously the level of engagement you have with individual service users reduces over time. But I think the fact that they know we are always there if the stuff hits the fan again, I think it's a great reassurance. <coughs> um, we have to pick a case study. I, I think it, it's incredibly difficult to pick one because we deal with such a complex range of people's needs. Um, so we look at Donald and Sylvia, who are a, a couple with learning disabilities, um, who, who live in sheltered housing. And over the years, they visit charity shops regularly and they buy anything, really, that takes the fancy, to the point where you could barely move in the home. <coughs> People couldn't get in to do the sort of compliance checks, the housing um, situation was becoming overcrowded, it was unsafe, unhygienic, and the tenancy was at risk. And basically, it was an obsession with, with um, charity shop um, stuff. So <coughs> we had to work with this couple and help them to realise that um, this wasn't a safe environment and they couldn't continue and actually if they carry on like this there's going to be no room for them. Um, and so our support worker was, was really good. She helped them through everything, they cleared one room at a time and actually helped them to deal with this sort of addiction to buy and stuff. Um, and they actually eventually realised that it was quite nice to have a lot of space and that actually their, their habit had been unhealthy. So they've now accepted that they don't do that and they're able to move on. So it, it's really given them an opportunity to be much more engaged with the community because they can, can work with people and that helps them to have a healthier life. Um, there was another one that I think is just really worth <coughs> looking at. It's a 27 year old girl who was homeless in, in an abusive relationship. Um, she had a lot of anxiety um, and she actually became unable to speak, literally. She just literally couldn't speak. Um, <coughs> she'd been homeless for nearly a year, sleeping on the streets. Um, it was in a very, very bad place, and she couldn't see a future for herself. Our floating support team, the sustain team, got involved with her and really helped her to find somewhere to live. And then they helped her to maintain that home, helped her to furnish the home, helped her to access grants and get some money. And, and eventually she's actually started speaking again. And so she now has a voice, and so quite literally the service has helped her to find a voice. Um, and you know that, that that's just a couple of, of really powerful examples of the changes that they're making in people's lives. Um, does it make a difference? <coughs> when you're spending public money, you have to be able to demonstrate that you're getting something from it. And so what we've done quite recently is we've developed a new tool to see whether actually what we do really makes any difference or not. And so we've got a number of indicators of needs or, or, or problems or issues that people have, you know, and we ask people, we guide them through a self-assessment. So, you know, how do you feel about um, your housing? Does it meet your needs? Are you happy with it? Is it a problem for you? And we score them at the beginning of the service and then we score them at certain various points through. And what you can see from this is actually over a period of time, in all of those areas which cause people problems with sustaining tenancy and having a safe life, we see a great improvement. And in fact, 96% of people who use the service have shown a marked improvement in all those indicators of need. And you can see across the bottom the relative change in each of those areas. So a 41% improvement in housing, 46% people improvement in terms of budgeting, and so on and so forth. And so there is some real powerful evidence there that what we're doing is making a big difference and actually works. <coughs> um, so what are we most proud of so far? Um, I think it's the things that our customers say, really. Um, you know, the support has been really good and it's sorted out a lot of problems. I just wish I could have the support forever. Well, sadly, can't, but it's there if you need it again. <coughs> um, it's been really good and it's helped me a lot and I tell everybody about it. Um, and honestly, I don't know where I would be without the help. And I was spiralling out of control. And we are there when nobody else seems to be. Unfortunately, because so much of the system from time to time seems to be broken, we're sometimes in there when it shouldn't be us that's in there, but sometimes we're the only people that are around. And we have got the expertise to access further help when it's needed. Um, 
The evidence demonstrates that this service is needed. The evidence demonstrates that it's effective, and it's equally important, it's cost effective. Because although it's a good investment by the council, what is delivered is actually demonstrates really good returns in terms of how much it would cost more in terms of social care, residential care, criminal justice, criminal justice system, and other services if our services didn't exist. <coughs> Nobody expects the need or demand is going to diminish. It's going to get there. The service is funded up to 21, 22, and there's no guarantees of further funding. And I think, given that it does do so much and plays such an important part, I think um, I really hope that the funding continues. Um, it's up to us to continue to demonstrate that it is effectively and that we are meeting the people that are needed. But just to go to the, back to that slide, you can see that when we're starting, people have got quite high levels of need. So we are dealing with people who have got the most complex levels of need within the society, within the community. Um, <coughs> so I think that is probably as much as you need to say. Okay, thank you.